So the difficulty of representing rules as a series of edges, or possibly just one edge, that departs from Q3 and eventually reaches back to Q3, um, is basically how would you be able to push not just one element, but let's say you wanted to push uh, three elements, K elements, whatever the number is. So to be able to do that, because we are only able to represent pushing one element at a time, you need to create intermediate steps, right? You need to have a place where you uh, push A, and then you need to go to an another intermediate step, you need to uh, push S and also B. But note that if you push first A and then S and then B, if you pop it, it will be read in the reverse order. First you will get B and then S and then A. So if you want the reader to read the, um, the rule in the same order that is written, you have to push it in the reverse order. So first you have to push B and then S and then A. And of course you will need an intermediate step between each one. So let's see how this works. So in this example, I wrote the rule A, Y, B to be the rule that you want. And you start from X and Y just to make it different because if it's just S, it, you might be confused um, as to there is ambiguity. And here, because I chose X and Y, there is no ambiguity. And also in the order, uh, this is A and this is B. So it's, there's no confusion there. So the basic idea is what I was saying. If you, wa if you are trying to... Um, represent a y b what you need to do is first push b then y and then a so you can go from each step you can do it in two ways you can do first you push um, the variable x sorry you pop the variable x right and you go to qr1 and then you read a you pop sorry you push b and you don't read anything and you don't pop anything right and then you push y and finally, you push A. Okay, so you need to create these three intermediate step states. If you do that, um, you get this exactly this edge. And it notes that it always starts in Q. It should be Q3 if it's to re represent. But basically, the central loop, it starts in the central loop and it goes back to the central loop. Why? Because you always want to go back to the interpreter loop where you consume the next rule. So that's why where you start is where you end. So in this case, it's Q2, you, you start in Q2 and eventually you go back to Q2. Um, and that's basically it. That's the only thing I'm gonna ask you if I ask you to convert from a context free grammar to PDA. The difficulty in doing so is really just, um, where all the people do mistakes is really just interpreting the reversed order. Uh, of course, if you recall the, um, the slides, if the rule is just uh, S to empty, which is this case, then you you don't need actually a s an intermediate st state, right? You can just consume it directly in one go. Similarly, if instead of epsilon, you just had S to A, you don't need an intermediate state. You could just do pop S and push A directly. So it's up to you how you want to write it. Um, they're all equivalent. So what I'm saying here is that in the book, this intermediate step is not required because you can coalesce um, these two edges with just one. You say uh, read uh, pop X and push B. So X and B are all in the same edge. But if you want to make it very naive or very uh, separate, you can do one state per each. There's no difference really. Okay, so in the next video we're going to do an exercise.